Give me a home among the gum trees With lots of plum trees A sheep or two, a kangaroo A clothesline out the back Veranda out the front And an old rocking chair You can see me in the kitchen oh, Good morning oh, Welcome to today at Dunamis oh, oh, What a fitting tune to start with, Sean Don't you just love a bit of uh, bush ballads in the morning? Bush oh, ballads. Bush ballads. I think that's what they're called, right? Bush ballads. I can remember the TV show that was with. This was this was a theme song for a TV the show. Theme song for the TV. I can't remember the name of the guy. Do you remember the name of the guy? Oh. I mean, uh, it was the theme song, and it was long running about houses and gardens and all that sort of stuff before house and gardens came in. So there was a yeah. show before Better Homes and Gardens. Before it was a real popular. No way. Show. Yeah, yeah, and the guy. John Burke's, Don't Burke's Backyard, Burke's oh, Backyard. Was that the theme for Burke's Backyard? Burke's Backyard, you can look oh. it up, Burke's Backyard, that's what it was. So, uh, oh, okay. And I think it's a heck of a lot better than all the other ones. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, I've never watched the other ones. I, oh, wow. I, I, I must admit, I did like Burke's Backyard, so yes. yeah. The guy just seemed to be a casual, laid-back fella that, oh. I don't know, what something went all went pear shape and he was gone. But yes. the fact of the matter is, is that uh, it was enjoyable. Yes, and there is there is a... There is a reason why we're playing this track. There is a reason why we're playing this track. Because track. we have a special guest. We have a special guest, Mr. Scott Beatty. Woo! Can we give him a warm welcome? Thank you. Hello, Scott. <laughs> welcome to Today Dunamis. The Thank studio you. is crowded here. It's so, it's so loud. Oh, it's my so goodness. Loud. Calm yes. down. Hey, hey, you on the back. Just chill out, all right? Okay. Security, <laughs> get him. <laughs> is that Kelly moving forward there? Okay. <laughs> yeah, no Kiwis. No. <laughs> Of Kelly, she's going to take you out. Now, uh, Scott, thank you for coming along and, and invited you to come on today. I, I've known you for several years now. In fact, uh, the reason I got to know you, this is where it breaks my heart, okay, is that you were running for Division 10 of our council some years back. Yes, regrettably, it didn't happen. Mm. Oh, that's okay. Look, I, I always say I've lived in the area for a lot of years, 50-odd years, but yeah. uh, I met some amazing people. Yeah. And that's I learned, how I met you. And it absolutely was, and I learned a lot about our community. And yeah. given how long my tenure was in the community, I was surprised how much I didn't know. Yeah, that's um, a good answer. So yeah. it, amazed, it blew me away, actually, the amount of groups and people that I met who do so much yeah. back in the community. Now, what I find fascinating about you is your business. Can you... Tell us about your business. Uh, yeah, my wife Joe and I we started way back in two thousand and five in a in a actually in my daughter's uh, she was an infant at the time um, in her room with a cot uh, that was my office uh, so we've grown a little bit since then we're seventeen years old now um, we have a number of staff in in the Philippines and in Australia um, we're mortgage brokers our business Cube Home Loans um, we've we've had a lot of success both state and nationally and all but one year of our operation we've won an award either state or nationally which we're very proud of wow that's great so what is the award called uh, we've won a number of awards so yeah. uh, um, but we've won the best uh, national office for diversification we've won the best independent office four years out of seven possible times in Queensland uh, in 2019, I won uh, Queensland All Round Broker of the Year, which wow. probably for me was a career highlight. So yeah. it was something I'm very proud of. Um, my kids didn't really care too much, but oh. So. Oh. <laughs> well, they care the benefits. <laughs> yes, they, they, they don't mind that. I would say that. <laughs> they so. don't mind the benefits. That's right. So. so uh, there was a while there where brokers, I think, some years back, were getting a bit of a raw deal, wasn't it? Um, well, look, I think post banking Royal Commission, uh, unfortunately. I believe that the commissioner was led astray by by certain bank CEOs, um, in spite of what the service that brokers provide. Uh, to um, that was actually why I made a political run, yeah. uh, because of that one of the, some of those recommendations. So le looking forward today, um, thankfully those recommendations were rejected by both uh, parties, both yeah. major parties. Mm -hmm. Uh, but not only that, now 70% of all credit applications for mortgages are done via mortgage brokers. 99-plus wow. uh, percent of them are free service brokers, so there's no cost to a cu customer to utilise the broker services who can navigate the world of 40-odd lenders uh, based on your personal circumstances. So the reason why I invited uh, Scott on today is because mm -hmm. we know that on Tuesday there was another bank interest rate. Uh-oh. Number half a percent. And I think this is now five consecutive months, which has set, I believe, a record, uh, I think. Is that correct? Yeah, uh, it, uh, it, well, it is. And interestingly enough, they moved during a federal election campaign, which was just after Easter. So that was a 
for me anyway, interesting looking into that side of things that traditionally the Reserve Bank would not move during a political campaign. Uh, whether that was because the Palmer Party were saying interest rates will stay at 3% or I don't know. It was a quite an interesting move, um, but it, it, it did have to happen. It did have to slow inflation down. Uh, obviously, as a consumer, I'd prefer there not to be interest rate rises, mm. but we'll, it'll be very interesting to see what happens over the next coming months leading into Christmas. The irony of the situation is... Uh, for a lot of people, it's incredible pressure. So if you have an average, I understand, something like a $500,000 loan, which to me sounds huge, mm, yeah. assuming that's around average now. That's oh. that's that's normal. You're, you're a broker. Is, is this yeah. average? Uh, definitely. Look, our, pr- up until well, certainly pre-COVID, my average loan size is around $330,000. And yeah. most customers I see around the area where I live and work. Uh, that's increased well and truly above the 500000 mark. So that, That's because of the ridiculous house prices right now. Uh, correct. Um, yeah, and it's kind of – a lot of people have a FOMO. They, they want to get in and before the market rises, and it is a, so it's true. a hard one to predict. Um, my, my parents still live on Shaler Road. Yeah. They paid nine grand for their house 50-odd years ago <laughs> for, an, for an acre and a quarter. What? Uh, <laughs> so land. what would that be <laughs> roughly worth? Uh, uh, one it, point something? Oh, uh, if they're unlucky. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. It's, and the scary part is it'll be demolished and it, it'll and just have probably yeah. well, whenever they eventually sell, but probably just flats or, or units put in there more than likely. Well, I mean, even our home, we've been in for 20 years, just over 20 years. Yeah. Um, you know, we, we bought the land for like $78,000, which was cheap in that time. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, my God. I'm in Canubia. Uh, I think the house we built was like $170,000, which I thought was just ridiculous. Mm. Um, and prior to COVID, I think the value is around that six fifty, six hundred fifty thousand. Now they're telling me it's one point one or one million. I, I find it hard to believe, to be honest. Although a couple of houses in my street have sold for one point two and a bit over, what? I find it hard to believe. Oh my goodness! Um, I really do. And even though they say prices have dropped. You know, they only dropped by like fifty thousand dollars or something. Yeah, and to be honest, I'm not seeing any that of that impact from my clients, from people with existing properties or people who are looking to enter the market. Still, uh, there's certainly people who are saying, "I'm just going to wait and see what happens with the price rises." Yeah. Um, but the difficulty is, of course, is that as interest rates increase, your borrowing capacity diminishes as well. Now that's an interesting point because, look, I am not in any way pretending to be a financial advisor or have experience. I'm just speaking from <laughs> what I read, research, hear, and mm. experience. Mm. Yes. But I understand every time it goes up that half a percent, your available funds goes down by about $20,000 or something. Is that rough? Like, what does it go so down So basically by? banks have a, 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 an assessment rate, or a, I call it a stress loading. So as a rule, it's about 3% above the actual customer rate. So, for example, if your rate is 4%, probably around four and a half following the Reserve Bank move on Tuesday, um, that the banks will be assessing you 3% over and above that rate. So they're building a stress loading into that. So there's no set figure because it depends on your income ratios and that kind of thing, how many children you've got, other debts you may have. Uh, that there's a whole heap of criteria that go into to those things. Uh, and it, there's so many different factors that, that come into play. It's not as simple as if you earn X amount of money, you can borrow Y amount of dollars. Um, but I, I tell people a for a couple, about 30% of your combined income can be attributed to debt yeah. as, a, as a rule, rough rule yeah. of thumb. Wow. Wow. So l- let me ask the question. First of all, uh, we've had five interest rate increases. Um, my personal opinion is I still think it's going to be going up towards the end of this year. I don't see it leveling off yet. If you're really fortunate, it might only be a quarter, but I still see it going up. What is your outlook? Well, earlier in the year, I predicted most people will be on a 4% rate by the end of this calendar year. Unfortunately, I was correct. Oh. Uh, um, but I, don't, I agree with you. I don't believe the rate rises have stopped. Yeah. Um, there's how much more is to come. The interesting thing to see will be that the fuel excise ends at the end of this month. That was a temporary September. reduction. Oh, yeah. um, so that's going to come off, which is going to add to cost of living pressure. And there's plenty of people who tell me, oh, but, you know, when I was – Younger, I had 18% interest rates and that kind of thing, and I, and I don't dispute that. Mm. Uh, I worked in a bank at, at, at Woodridge, and we had people throw their keys on the counter going, I, I just can't do it, get yeah. out. I, I just need to get out of the situation. But I, mo- I mortgaged back then about 70 grand. Uh, yes. So that was me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so <laughs> very, very different circumstances. Yeah. Uh, and now we've also got cost of living increase 
cost prices, yeah. fuel, mm-hmm. uh, electricity. Um, typically, it's most households are two. Fruit, two vegetable, wages. produce, everything's going through the roof. Absolutely, Absolutely. yeah. And then on, on top of all of this, um, it's, it's just, you know, everything's going up. And it's how do we balance this out? How do we, we we've got to be able to survive. And it's there's still people trying to buy in the um, home rental areas. They're predicting, could you believe this, in the next couple of years, three years, I was reading, they're predicting, and it's a prediction, so it doesn't mean it's got any real legs, but some 220,000 Southerners relocating here to Queensland in the next three years, I read in today's Courier Mail. Well, we can't oh, blame them. It's a beautiful place to live. <laughs> that that's is true. Uh, <laughs> let's, let's, <laughs> let's, let's get Trump's <laughs> fence down there and say, stop it, <laughs> stop at the border of Tweed. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> Southerners go out. Every time I get caught in that traffic, I've never seen the traffic so bad now. <laughs> heading it used to be if you're heading against to the Gokos, it was nothing, but it's just banked up even on Saturdays now. And I'm like, well, the Southerners, please go home. You know, <laughs> that's, that's, that's what it is. Don't forget international immigration as well, uh, that once that door reopens, I think that'll see further pressure on house prices as well. Mm, mm, definitely. Well, I mean, I, I, it's just, you know, and they, we have the lowest unemployment in decades. Mm. Uh, our buying capacity, I just saw the latest results in, in our buying is way up, so we're still buying. And I don't know how come we're still buying with the things that are. So that's not going to help us out with inflation. Uh, so we see all these things happening. So how does the average couple, person who has a, a house mortgage, how do they handle, what's the best ways to handle uh, the debt? It's an, it's an awesome question. So there's a couple of things. So firstly, mm. if, you have a, if you have a debt, be it a personal loan, car loan, home loan, whatever it may be, make payments as frequently as you can. Mm, so mm. pay weekly, if not fortnightly, tie it in with your pay cycle. So for example, if your pay goes in on a Thursday, have your payments coming out on a Friday, um, just in case your pay goes in late or something yeah. like that. Uh, round it up if you can. So if your payment's $191, make it 200 if you can. That's good, yeah. Um, yeah. So pay that extra payments into the loan. If you get a windfall and you're not sure what to do, dump it into the loan. It can work for you in the meantime. Yeah. Uh, if you have multiple debts, it's a good idea, in my opinion, and it's it's not a terrible idea ever to get advice. But if yeah. you if you want to just go with the flow, uh, start with your smallest debt first. A lot of people, experts say you should attack the highest interest rate first. Personally, as human beings, we like to see results. Yeah. So start with the smallest mm-hmm. debt. Yeah. Tread water on the other debts. Pay the minimum, of course. Hit that smallest debt you can. Once that's out of the way, then excel what you were paying on that smallest debt. Hit the next one, and you'll start to see some results, and you'll feel like you're getting somewhere. Oh. Um, just be careful too if you are on a fixed rate, uh, or, or typically with personal loans. Most of those products don't allow you, if you paid extra, they don't allow you to pull it back. So just be careful that if you want to keep some up your sleeve, so if the hot water system blows up or something like that, that you've got a bit of an emergency fund up your sleeve. Mm -hmm. Um, Especially if you're on a fixed rate home loan, typically you can't, or there's restrictions on paying extra, about 10 grand a year as a rule. Uh, And often you can't pull those surplus funds back to the conclusion of the fixed rate period. But people don't realise that on the fixed rate, you don't have as much liberty to, to withdraw or redraw, isn't it? T- typically, you can't. Not all lenders. Some lenders yep. do allow it, but obviously, as a rule of thumb, you generally can't get any surplus that you've paid extra into the loan. Um, the other big thing that I see, and I call it a loyalty tax, so I think we all pay enough taxes, um, but a lot of people say, well, I just do everything with XYZ Bank because that's where I've already banked or yep. I got my loan with them two years ago, so it should be okay. Mm. Um, you, you just can't afford to to do that in the current market. You've got money on the table. Uh, my, I do this every day, all day, every day. I've done personally well over 1,500 mortgages for clients over the years. Um, I did a, an ANZ loan review for a client of ours yesterday and I, when I looked at it, I realised that I'd actually got them a better rate than my own loan. Wow. Uh, okay. So we then did a pricing review on my own loan, which yeah. I my loan only settled in January, so it's still yeah. a relatively new loan. Yeah. Um, the existing lender dropped it by 0.33%. Um, so I'm still going to have a rate increase, but le- even though the rates went up by 0.5, I'm going to go up only by less than 0.2 in reality. Yeah, yeah. So, so I've offset. Which, I was listening to a program just uh, this week, and and uh, it was a financial advisor, and they were saying uh, if it's not fixed, uh, look at other lenders right now to see what they're offering because if they've got new home loans, they're offering a lower rate. And so they were saying that even though you've got to pay that fee, 
which could be what about nine hundred dollars. It depends on the lender. So just um, it's it's not necessarily black and white to say you should never change if you're on a fixed rate. Obviously, if you're a fixed and you you've got a two or a low three in front of your rate, it's it, it would almost certainly be not worth your while to refinance. Oh. Um, but sometimes uh, there can be very only very nominal costs to change lenders. Yeah. Um, on a variable rate, um, by law, then lenders are not allowed to charge you an early payout fee. So if your loan settled oh, okay. yesterday, you could pay it out today without any yeah. penalty. They can charge you a discharge fee, which is, uh, I call it a because they can fee, yeah. um, <laughs> but, but they do have an administration cost, which they pass on to you as a customer, and any relevant government charges. So yeah. I tell people to assume six to six, seven hundred to maybe $1,000 if you're looking to refinance. But it's interesting to note too that a lot of lenders not only will offer better rates to new to bank customers, but they'll also um, throw money. Some lenders will throw money at you to refinance with them. Oh. Um, there's no caps on that. Sometimes people say, "Oh, do I have to sit with them for three months?" Or no, theoretically, I mean, you'd probably go crazy. But yeah. you could theoretically <laughs> do it every day if you were that way inclined. Um, and it's important to note too that. Whether you use a mortgage broker or not, and obviously I'm a strong advocate of that, it's a free service, there's yeah. no cost or obligation to you to do anything, but a broker will help you negotiate with your current bank as long as that lender allows us to on your behalf. Okay. And it doesn't cost you. So even if you're not sure what to do, and you I've never used a broker, I don't know, it, it costs you nothing to find out. Yeah. And the mm. worst that can happen is your existing lender will say, we're not prepared to make you a better rate. Yeah. We're, 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 you, you're on as good as it's going to be, yeah. in which case a broker, or you can do it yourself if you prefer, but can then compare it with the rest of the market and make a recommendation for you. So if you're with a bank and it's been like four or five years, what would be that current interest rate? I would suggest you'd be forgetting the 0.5 rate rise because not lend, lenders haven't passed that on yet, um, but you'd, you'd probably be in the low fours. Uh, you might be in the high threes if you're lucky, but okay. I would suggest you'd be in the four, 4.2 mark. And what are the banks offering to new customers? The, for, again, forgetting the rate rise, 351 is the cheapest rate on offer with a $4,000 cash back for refinancing. Mm, wow. And that's with no fees as well. So it's And can a, you fix that? Uh, you can, uh, sorry, not at that rate. You can yeah. fix, but fixed rates at the moment, you're probably going to see in the high fours, m maybe mid to low fours, sorry, mid to high fours on the uh, fixed rates at the moment. So it's, it's fixing's not a terrible option, but just be mindful you lose your flexibility. And I mentioned before there's no early payout fees, but if you're on a fixed rate, a lender is within their rights to charge you what's called economic loss. For that time. Spot on. So yeah. if you break a fixed rate and they're going to lose money, they can they can effectively charge you that interest that they may have lost. Yeah. So it's rare that I'd recommend fixing all of a loan, but it, it certainly mm -hmm. does Like happen. half the loan maybe? You might, for example, spot on, go half fixed, half variable, so you've got uh, a bit of flexibility with your variable portion. Yeah. But just be mindful, again, that sometimes it, you, you erode, you, uh, erode your buying your, your power to, to potentially change lenders. Yeah. Um, and obviously a lot of people are on fixed rates. They're going to be coming off fixed rates over the next 12 to 18 months. So what is the interest rate do you think they've been fixed rated on? Like if they did a fixed rate 12 months ago, what do you think that rate is? Uh, pro probably sub three. Sub three. <laughs> sub three. Spot probably. And so, so they'll be coming off four. Uh, if they're lucky. If they're, if they're lucky, they're going to go on. To, if, if they've got another six or so months to go, you'll be very lucky to be sitting with a low four rate. How high do you see it getting? Great question. Um, obviously, it's always your circumstances dependent, but personally, I, I, as I said earlier, I did predict that people will be on four by the end of the calendar year. I suspect we're going to probably hover around the 5%. So, but that... The government has in the federal government have indicated they're not going to extend the fuel excise discount. Yep. So, whether they but you know the government, Scott. <laughs> I mean, like I mean the uh, the the previous government said they were never going to do a break in the um, fuel excise. Mm, we're yeah. going to give us a break, and then all of a sudden they did. And uh, I think that the current federal government is under pressure because there were promises that they're going to bring down electricity bills, this bill and this bill, and so far nothing has come down. Agreed. So I think they're under pressure that they're going to have to do something. something. Well, look, and, and it's a, I'm glad you brought up electricity, and, and we've spoken a lot about home loans and that kind of thing, but don't, don't forget electricity providers shop around on that as well. Yeah. Uh, every time you get a bill, that's, an op, that's a reminder for you to shop the market. Do yes. not pay a loyalty tax to your health insurance, your car insurance, your home insurance, electricity provider, you name it. Yeah, and no, no, I think that's, that's good wisdom. Credit cards, what do you think of credit cards? Look, it, it's, 
like anything, they can be a great tool. Um, you've just got to use them correctly. Uh, I've been around this industry a long time and I've seen a lot of people use tools incorrectly. Yeah. Uh, so, um, so one thing that I, I talk to a lot of people about, and I don't sell credit cards, so I have no vested yeah. interest in what people do with credit cards, um, but there's two types of credit card facilities available. One's a 55-day Interest-free. Uh, Interest-free. And then there's what I call a zero-day card. A 55-day card will typically attract a 17% plus interest rate. A zero-day card will probably be around the 7 to 11% mark. So if I'm going to drive home from here today and put fuel in the car, and I know I'm going to pay that in full by the end of the next month, I would put that on a 55-day card because I'd like to think I'll clear that card yep. in full. So who cares what the interest rate is? But if I'm going to buy a fridge or something, I may not clear that in full by the end of the next month. I want to put that on a zero-day card. Now, I see plenty of people where they've got 12 grand owing on a 55-day card. And I said, why are you on this card? And they said, oh, because I get the points. Oh. Uh, so, um, You're paying for points. <laughs> correct. So if you have a card that you don't pay off in full and you are on one of those cards that's probably 55 days, you're probably paying 17% interest, ring your current provider and say, hey, I've got a card. You, you can see I don't clear it in full each month. Is there a better card that you think will suit my needs? Yeah. Ask the question. That's not a that's not a difficult question. It's not a confronting question. Sometimes people say to me, "Oh, but why doesn't the bank do that?" Look, unfortunately, they're making money. The bank doesn't work <laughs> for you. They work for the shareholders. So if you don't ask, you don't get. Yeah. Uh, look, uh, prior to um, COVID, I had a young couple family. They came to me, and they're in a lot of stress financially uh, with different areas. They had credit cards, and they had this and this and this. And you know, I'd said to him, "Look, go to your bank." you're better off to bring everything under the one loan for your bank rather than your credit card. They had like two free credit cards and everything. Just bring all in one area and then cut up those credit cards because obviously it's a headache to you and manage that area there. And, you know, they did that. With, it's not often people listen. <laughs> and they did that. Within that month, the person came back to me and said, what a difference it's made. Not that they didn't have that debt. Yeah. But now the interest rate was from 11, 12, 13 on the cards. I think it's like three or something percent. And it was all manageable. One payment was doing everything. Oh, wow. What about uh, line of credit on your home loan? We don't do too Equity. many line of credits. Uh, so, so the old, the old school of lending with the line of credit was: I'd put all my groceries and everything I spend on a credit card. My pay and everything would go into the home loan, and once a month I'd have a line of credit that sweeps the credit card and clears it in full. Uh, I personally use the product, and as a single person, I love that product, and it worked very, very well for me. Uh, yeah. My wife and I. Uh, um, have different spending habits, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so that as diplomatically as I can uh, to make sure I'm not locked out of the house when I get home. But um, uh, so, I per, for for her, I personally wouldn't recommend yeah. it to her to use that product. Um, yeah. So, so if, if you're disciplined, it can be a great product and it can help you pay off the loan faster. Uh, personally, I don't use it currently, but. Previously, I have as a as a single person, as I said. <laughs> what about the equity in your home loan? Look, it, again, it's a great tool, but it's how you use it. You mentioned before about that couple who, who consolidated yeah. their debt. They more than likely use the equity in their house to, yes, to do that. Yes, that's what they did, yeah. Um, so there's a couple of points. So if, obviously, if you're putting a car for, car loan, for example, in with your home loan, you don't want to be paying a car off over the next 25, 30 years. <laughs> that's right. It becomes yeah. a pretty expensive car. So two options. One is, for example, you could set a separate loan split. So yeah. you might have loan A and B, and yeah. B is the car loans you paid off over seven or 10 years. So yeah. you've still got the cheaper rate, but you're getting rid so of that. Old car, seven, 10 uh, years. Well, yeah. true. Yeah. Yeah. Um, or, or the key is if you're disciplined enough to continue to maintain those repayments that you were previously paying, otherwise you'll end up paying it off over an extended period of time. Well, yeah, because I'd hope that if they were having a financial loan for a car, and it was over four years a set of price, and they had it in their home loan, that they'd be making those same, same payments to get it done. But, you know, obviously you want them not to touch that equity. Another thing is, and obviously it hasn't happened, if the home loan, home, home values had dropped, so I don't know if you remember, uh, before Bill Clinton, who's president, uh, left, presidency the office uh he came up with this weird ruling about the last year that everyone in america should be able to get a home and you could borrow 110 percent on your home i don't know if you remember that time and the whole idea was was that the home would build equity and then when george w bush came in within 12 months there was this crisis to where the banks were calling in the loans because 
they said we need equity and everybody was selling their boats and their things and the Australian banks got really burnt because the American banks ran out of money and their Australia's big four were lending money so we got burnt really bad uh, which we didn't do anything except our greedy banks doing it <laughs> uh, but we were meant to suffer for that yeah. so do you see the house prices falling or do you just think the demand is just too high um, I, I don't see the house prices falling significantly while they well, it's like anything while there's demand. So just going back to what you were saying, uh, that America introduced what's called a non-recourse. So in other words, you could get out of, walk out of a house and the bank couldn't come after you. In Australia, that is absolutely not the case. The bank will hunt you down. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, and your firstborn and so on. So, oh <laughs> so, um, yeah. But they, they definitely have recourse. Now, if there is a loss, so they you've gone into mortgage in possession and let's say there's a 30 grand loss, uh, the bank will seek recovery against you for that more than likely would seek recovery against you. It's possible the loan would be mortgage insured, uh, in which case uh, the, the insurer would pay the bank and the insurer will then come after you as the borrower. Wow. Um, do I believe that property prices will drop? Probably yes, but I don't believe it's going to be like what the media predicting. And there may be areas that are impacted more, say, than say, and I'll use Tanamera as an example, which is typically a bit on the low end of, of yep. purchase price, um, compared to, say, Sanctuary Cove, where a 10% drop at Sanctuary Cove, like we saw during the GFC, is very, very likely and very easy to happen because their property prices are much greater Way in up. value. Whereas if you've got a property in Tanamera at, say, 350 a 10% drop is a, is a significant drop. Where do you get a house in Tanamera for 350 oh, <laughs> a, un, a unit. A unit. <laughs> Even a unit. I mean, yeah. my mum lives in the units. and they're like, yeah. Now they're, they're selling on that Logandale estate at 500000 Yeah, definitely. Which I just think is overpaid. Oh the fees is just too much money. I just can't understand it. So what comes back to is this, I hear people get angry uh, and I, I've got a couple of people who I know who are angry because uh, the people who own the rentals have put the rent up and they're like, well, how dare I? I heard some say the rent went up $100 a week. Someone else said they was went up 150 a week. And I was saying to them, they said they should do a freeze. I think it was the Greens saying they should do a freeze. They couldn't do that. But, you know, the fact of the matter is it's still, it could be a mum and dad who's got that. Mm. So doing a freeze on them putting it up would be like saying put a freeze on the Reserve Bank. I mean, like... You know, like give us a break how did how do they do it it's, it's not i mean i'm sure there's always greed but it's not that this is what happens it's, it's the cost is coming in someone's still got to pay that mortgage it, yep. it's not dissimilar to uh, to woolies putting up their their milk or whatever the grocery is because they're paying more for it so they pass mm -hmm. that cost onto the consumer yeah. um so as interest rates rise that's debatable you know for me well I, I i i yeah i agree i remember Especially the calls the for this is a dollar for <laughs> the farmers and they got sued by the government because they never passed it on so oh. yeah. Especially, except for milk yeah. <laughs> so that's right. maybe milk wasn't the best example but fuel yeah. or even fuel is a debatable example as well, well yeah, <laughs> so, it's terrible. So. there's somebody the ba the fuel prices i want to know why diesel hasn't come down yeah, me too diesel's yeah. not moving Moving. I mean, it's the first time diesel has, has always been cheaper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. just hasn't moved. That's kind of dirty compared to the others. But oh, there's something crook going on. So, but anyhow, we well, live in a free market, so that's what correct. happens. And and you could argue that that Green's policy is to try and encourage investors to sell properties, which will create more supply, which will hopefully reduce demand, which could make pricing more affordable. It, it's a pretty long bow to draw, in my opinion. It's a long <laughs> bow to draw. Um, well, it's the same as the Brisbane City Council trying to say that anybody has an Airbnb, we're going to charge you extra fees now because we want long-term rentals. And then they're saying to uh, retired folks, uh, we want you to sell your home because it's too big and we will allow you not to be taxed for two years on that cash you find out what to do rather than the normal one year. So, you know, there's a lot of uh, things. Hopefully they don't do too much bully boy. But, I mean, but I, I, you, know, you know, they have a, a second home. I'm not talking about a development home, they've got a mortgage on it and they're just passing on the cost when the lease runs out. I mean, it's the way it is. So are the banks lending as good as they were or are they tighter and harder? Because I hear in the business world, I've got people in the business world, they said the banks are ferocious. They're just not wanting to lend. They want your blood, you know? And <laughs> yep. so what are they like now? Are they harder? It depends on, it always depends on circumstances and you've got some clients uh, who who did their loan just breezes through? Uh, certainly, some lenders are easier than others. They're, they're if you like more aggressive uh, than others. Uh, but it, it depends on always on your circumstances. So, oh, look, I run a small business. I have employees. They could go in on two pay slips and get a loan. If I went to that same bank to get a loan, I'd have to provide probably one, if not two, years of financial information 
to make sure I can qualify for the loan that they've given to one of my employees, as an example. Because you're a business owner. Uh, correct. So, But having said that, a lot of, uh, especially uh, since uh, uh, mid this year, a lot of the lenders are starting to make it easier for self-employed people. So, for example, if you have a company or a trust and you're paying yourself wages, they're starting to fact, if they can see it for three, if not six months, they'll, they'll utilise that as proof of income, rather than having to trawl through one, if not two years' financials. Uh, some lenders are disregarding company liabilities. So if you're an electrician, you might have half a dozen utes on the road. Uh, good luck getting a home loan with six car loans. Uh, but <laughs> the, the lender, some of the lenders now disregard those debts, providing they're in the business entity, so they're kept separate. Separate. So th- there's certainly flexibility. And, and, and look, and again, I'm a little biased, but it's the importance of dealing with a broker who can navigate that market for well, you. Well, that's right. But I have known uh, probably last year, two years, uh, three persons who did work for brokers trying to get a home loan and each one of them, this is before the interest rates were going up, got rejected. So there just had to be three people whom I knew and it just showed me that the banks were just getting tighter and tighter. And the, when I said about business, I'm talking about people who are developers, so not for their private home, but were trying to get bank loans for their development of lands. i got a friend who has got uh, eight acres in Canubia Prime and in Canubia here, okay, three separate two and a half acre blocks, okay, so right about there, uh, that he's, I'm just looking at all the plans that he's looking to do up right now, and uh, he's been working with a particular bank for 30, 40 years, but just what they want out of him and doing the area there, they're just so much harder right now, you know, yeah. he's a developer, he's not, they're not building, he just develops the land and gets it ready for sale. And the real estate says, get that on the market. We'll have it sold before the inks, you know, ink won't even dry because there's such a demand. But I wouldn't even want to buy land today because you can't get a builder. Well, and the building costs are obviously high or, or is the builder going to be there when you're ready to <laughs> complete the <laughs> you project? You want the insurance. <laughs> to, as yeah. another one. But look, I, I recall, I have many funny stories over the years, but uh, I remember sitting down with a young guy and he sat down with me and he says, look, I'm reluctantly sitting with you. I just want to let you know I've, banks with the NAB since I was three years old. I do everything with the NAB and I've been there. I'm just coming to sit with you because the real estate recommended I do. And I said, yeah, no, look, no problem. But can I just ask, are there any other financial decisions you're making based on when you were three years old? And, <laughs> and he said, I've, I've never thought of it like that. Um, and he's still a customer of ours today. Yeah, uh, well, and, and we got him a better deal than what he could get. Yeah. Um, so, And again, it comes back to that loyalty tax. So yes, you might have for years found a lender that, that has really worked for you, but it doesn't mean they're going to tomorrow. Um, it's a free market and take advantage of it. And whether you use a broker or not, or whether you even like brokers, you benefit from the competition that we provide. So l- let me just bring the conclusion. First of all, let me highly recommend my brother here, Scott. Okay, so if you are interested in looking at home loan or refinancing that area there, you know, we put the ad up on our page. Yes. So your company. At the same time, if you don't know, you can contact us and we'll direct you towards mm-hmm. that area. And, and just, sorry, can I just add yeah. to that? Even if you're just not sure how to do that health check, we can help you do that. If, you don't, if you're if you happy for us to do it, it doesn't cost you anything. We don't make any money out of it. Mm. It, it, co- it costs you nothing. We don't gain anything other than hopefully your goodwill. Yeah. Uh, and if, if the lender won't allow us to do it, we can at least give you the process so you know how to attack that lender the best possible way to get you the best possible result. Mm. Is there any grants being offered today for is, – is it new homes or is it existing homes? It sounds um, to me more like it's existing homes. So the, the Queensland State Government will give you $15,000 if you buy or build a brand new home. So in short, if I tell people if you're the first person to sleep in it, as a rule, you're going to get fifteen grand from the Queensland State Government. That was to offset the GST that came in in 2000. It could theoretically end tomorrow, but I don't think it will, given it's been in 20-odd years. I, I would never even counsel anybody to build a new home. Probably, we're not seeing it at the minute, but you could also buy a brand new place and more than likely you'd be eligible for that 15 grand mm-hmm. as well. So if, you, if it was a block of units or a house that was already complete and you're going to be the first person to sleep in it, more than likely you'd be eligible for that $15,000. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a tough... But see, then, if, you, if you're a young couple, right, and it's your first home... But it's an established home. Is the federal government still giving the ten grand on uh, this? You home? don't get any money, but you can avoid what's called lenders' mortgage insurance, yep. providing a couple, three things: Australian citizen, obviously over eighteen, and you've done your tax return from June thirty that just went there. If you th- don't do your tax returns, the government stops you from getting, you know, your child support or what? Not child support, you know, like 
what do you family call it? Tax benefits. Oh, this family tax benefits. benefits, all that sort of stuff. They stop you and all that stuff. So oh this is God. it's a clever criteria to get people to do their tax, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I tell you what. Um, but we have to supply the notice of assessment. Yeah. Uh, you still need a minimum five percent deposit plus cost, but yeah. effectively the government will guarantee the loan instead of you needing to engage or, or pay what's called lenders mortgage insurance. If you're unlucky, that's a, a conservative twelve plus thousand dollar saving. So let's say the house is five hundred thousand dollars. So you're saying you need minimum five, that's 25,000. Can it be gifted or you have to prove that you've actually done it? Could it be your parents gave you 25,000, put it in your bank? I understand the bank won't let that go um, through. That's not true. It depends on the lender and it always depends on your circumstances. So some lenders, for example, use what's called rental policy. So let's say you're renting through Ray White at Shaler Park, it doesn't matter who. But for six, if not 12 months without any adverse rental conduct, the lender, the lent, most lenders will be, will take that that you've got a history of making good conduct of repayments. So in other words, as long as you've got the deposit, they pretty well don't care where it comes from, as long as it's not repayable. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, okay. Because I thought some banks were saying, no, 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 no. It can't be gifted. It's got to be proven that you've raised it. Some lenders, yes. So if I'm living with mum and dad now. Uh, and I go to buy my first house and mum and dad say, here's 25 grand, go to town. I've probably only got one or two lenders I can utilise. That's called non-genuine savings. Yeah. Uh, the alternative is if I'm renting through a licensed real estate agent, more than likely I can do that uh, in lieu of waiting for genuine savings. Or I've got to hold that money for a three plus month period in my account and oh, then three it's deemed month. that's okay then it's deemed as genuine savings yeah yeah, oh. yeah that's that, that's okay oh for three plus month that's 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 okay right. so yeah. three months one day it now meets policy beautiful away we go yeah well that's 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 workable yeah, yeah. and it, and if you are a first time buyer um check out the super saver scheme uh it basically enables you to make voluntary super contributions to your super and pull those voluntary contributions back to purchase your first home right Okay. okay, so it's not your mandatory super. That's you can't touch that. This is yeah. extra payments. So rather than the extra a, you put in, yeah. yeah, rather than putting it in a bank at three percent, if you're lucky, yeah, you can put it into your super and get a tax deduction for doing so, yeah, uh, and take advantage of your super funds return, whatever that may be. I mean, something's got to give down the line here because the pressure that I see mounting right now for the federal government. I mean, I don't know why they want government. It's just like, who wants, no disrespect, <laughs> go, like who would want to be sitting government right now? I can only see it going up to more calamity. Oh, my goodness, yeah. Not at any <laughs> fault of any government, just the way the economy is. It's just, uh, and of course, the only encouragement is it could be worse. You could be in the UK. <laughs> you could be in America. You could be in Ireland. Canada. Or Canada. <laughs> or worse, you could be in devastation and be in Zimbabwe, which yeah. is 130% inflation and, and everything else, which is far worse. But the fact of the matter is, it's, it's just, and I, my heart really goes out to those trying to rent and find places. I saw in today's paper, too, that the state government's trying to pressure the local council to help stimulate more in rental. I mean, we wanted to do something ourselves, trying to help out in areas, but trying to get through the tape is just uh, just ridiculous, you know. And even if they started today, it's going to be a fairly lengthy process to solve that problem. So, That's right. Which is it's, another, not, it's not going to happen. It's not going to be a, oh, by 30 days we'll be right. It, it's a fairly lengthy process to get that yeah. to solve this problem. Well, Scott, thank you so much for joining us. We do appreciate you and you and Joe. Yeah. And uh, you just celebrated your 50th birthday a couple of months ago. So yes. uh, <laughs> yes. happy birthday. Thank I got you. my 60th coming up. So uh, I'm a decade <laughs> ahead of you. The air's okay on this side. The air's okay. And uh, we certainly pray favour with you and your business. And again, anybody out there, I highly recommend you, your family, your business. And if anybody's interested in uh, wanting the information to get hold of Scott and the business there, then we're more than happy to help you out there. Thank yes. you. Thank you so much, my friend. Okay. Woo, keep Thank safe. You. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. Woo. That was a good conversation, Sean. I had, I did not understand any of that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to probably listen back to this a couple of times so I can have a well, maybe I, a, a 50% understanding of what was just discussed. <laughs> in a nutshell, yeah. it's tough out there. Yeah. But the fact of the matter is, it doesn't matter what generation we're in or, or wherever we're at, there's always going to be tough times. And, and yeah. yet I do remember when interest rates uh, were around 17%. Goodness, okay, 17%. but again, we're only talking about home loans for about seventy thousand dollars. So, uh, whereas today, you know, in average, it's around that five hundred thousand. Yeah, and with these five 
interest rates, if you yeah. own a five hundred thousand dollar loan, these five interest rates, yeah. then your repayments are over six hundred dollars up a oh month goodness. if oh you've goodness. all five of these payments and so that that's the difficulty well uh i just wanted to bring this in as a bit Ooh. of information for yeah. uh, our folks just yes. to, and this is what helps us out was by listening but uh let's go to some other lighter news stories shall we yes have I, you got something for me yes. do, 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 do. okay 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 i i <laughs> I really want to talk about this new movie that's going to be coming out at some point with with uh, Winnie the Pooh. Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> I love it. I no. love it so much. <laughs> Camera's not moving too well here. Okay. Uh, I was talking to Ed the other day about. I said you need to look this on. You need to look up on this yeah, yeah, yeah. because um, seemingly, you know, Winnie the Pooh wasn't created by Disney. No, no. A A Milne. Yeah, A A Milne. And uh, seemingly the. Copyright, we call it. Or else? Yeah, yeah. So the it's uh, only seventy five years. Yeah, yeah. So it's now Winnie the Pooh. The original Winnie the Pooh is now in public domain. Yeah. So that's that's not Disney's Winnie the Pooh. Yeah, not Disney's. And let's just say the difference between Disney's Winnie the Pooh yep. and the original Winnie the, Winnie the Pooh is the red coat. Yes, yeah, red coat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So according to copyright, yeah, copyright law, basically, yeah. You can do anything you want with Winnie the Pooh now because it's no longer copyrighted because yeah, it's over yeah. 75 years, but you cannot include the red coat. The red coat. If you include the red coat, you can then have – you can be liable, liable by Disney, Disney for yeah. suit. Yeah. So as a result of this, <laughs> some UK British filmmakers <laughs> yeah. are bringing out a brand new Winnie the Pooh movie, which yeah. is – over to you. Which is a um, – <laughs> it's a slasher. <laughs> Oh, Erica? Erica? Um, I think the Wi-Fi just cut out. Oh, no. That's okay. We're recording. We can fix this later. Okay. That's okay. That's okay. So, yeah, it's a um, <laughs> it's a slasher movie. A slasher can movie. Can you believe uh, Do you have a picture for it? I do have a picture, but I we I can't show it. It's, t- it's too much, Sean. Just I show think, that other no, one where no, I show it's the it's too car. much. Also, because I had to disconnect an output to run four cameras today. But we can just hold it up. Oh, oh, I could probably show it up. Oh, yeah, I could just show it up on my phone. Show on your phone. <laughs> okay. Don't now, be like that. It's it, Look, I the image is pretty full on. Don't do any bad images. Just show me the one where he's in that car. Okay, okay. Let's see if I can get this up. If you can't, I can. Oh, so. no, I can get it up. It's just there's a stinking ad. Advertise. <laughs> uh, let's see if can you, can anyone see this. Yes. I don't know. Yeah, can we zoom in? Do you want to come? Do you want me to hold it on my camera? Uh, yes. Oh, no, that's terrifying. Yeah, like I said, I don't, I don't think you should look at it because it oh. is actually like a slasher horror movie. Because uh, the story is uh, Winnie the Pooh. This the movie's called Of Blood and Honey. Uh, we we'll see called Of Blood and Honey. Oh well, it's called Winnie the Pooh Blood and Honey, I should say. And the story is Pooh and Piglet are the main villains going on a rampage after being abandoned by college-bound Christopher Robin because he is um, not giving him food basically because he's, he's pulled away, left them. Yeah. So Piglet and Pooh yep. go on a rampage. Go on a rampage in England. So what's really impressive, what really impresses me, this was shot in 10 days. It, it was filmed in 10 days. That's pretty good. That's a, that's a good filmmakers if they can get the whole thing done in 10 days. So, you know, I'm pretty impressed. And uh, there's no, there is no um, release date yet for when this is going to be out. All we know is, is that there's been a couple of uh, screenshots being released and they are horrifying. Yeah, well... <laughs> I can't believe it. It will not be a movie I'll be seeing. Yeah, yeah. But also there's a brand new Pinocchio movie coming out. Wait, there is? Yes, a Pinocchio <laughs> movie. And this is also to do with the copyrights run out. Oh, yeah, yeah. So oh. that's 75 years old. Yeah, it's yeah. All, also got over the Disney lungs there. Yeah, so yeah. I don't know what that movie's about unless you can yeah, find out knows? for me about that one. But there's a brand new Pinocchio. Well, I, I've heard about it before about how like a lot of the old uh, Disney fairy tale movies, they've like... They cleansed a lot of what they were originally based on. Like Alice in Wonderland's like a lot more darker than yeah. what Disney portrays. Like that, for example. So I guess it's all. I was kind never of... into Alice in Wonderland. Oh really? Yeah. What is that? A man. Oh okay. All right. <laughs> all right. All right. Uh, that's true. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> Kelly's in a good. I mean, Erica's in a good job. There's your back in there. Was, sorry, I'm researching the movie. Oh, okay. Oh. Do you find anything on the movie on the yes. Pinocchio? Pinocchio one. Is it a bad one? It's an upcoming American musical fantasy film. Uh, from a screenplay by Zemix. It's a movie. Yeah, it's coming out, yeah, but from it's a fantasy film, so from a screenplay, live okay. action ad ad oh, yeah, adaptation. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, that's okay. Yeah, I don't understand. I guess it's just not by Disney. This so, time. was there ever a favorite Disney 
movie you liked? Okay, well, are we talking like classics? Or? Whatever, whatever. Is it a classic? Is it like, what is your favorite Disney movie? All right, Disney yeah. or Disney Pixar? Oh, I don't care. It can be you Disney know, Pixar. I, I really like Toy Story. I like the first Toy Story. Toy Story. Well, I that, really like it. That was Pixar. Yes. Wasn't it? Me. yes. That, that wasn't Disney. Oh, yeah. so I can't. That, Pixar. that that was Pixar. Oh, fine. Okay, I'll pick a Disney movie. Disney bought it. Yeah. So you can say anything in Pixar since owned by Disney, but that was before oh. Disney bought it, as far as I understand. So, uh, dang it. That was um, done before, wasn't it, Erica? Really quick. Um, the the new P- Pinocchio is Disney. It is Disney. Oh, yes. Oh, okay. Well, that's, yeah. that's good. Oh, well, okay. who knows what they put in there, anyhow. Oh, no. So, tell me <laughs> your favorite. My Disney. favorite Disney movie. Oh, my goodness. On the spot. Um, I'm sure it was Toy Story was never Disney, was it? It, it was Pixar, but I don't know. It was I probably can, before they were. I can confirm. Yeah. I don't confirm. know if it was picked up by. Yeah, I don't know what you were saying about how they. Yeah, went. because that was actually a Steve Jobs owned yeah, Pixar. Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure Apple and, owned yeah. or something to do with no, Pixar. No, Steve Jobs was kicked out of Apple and he started Pixar. Ah. And he ran that and it was highly successful. Yeah. Because um, I think it was the little fish and uh, yep. Toy Story and all that. that and then, it was before Disney acquired yeah. Pixar. Yeah. And then Disney ah. bought Pixar. Then Steve Jobs went back to Apple and took over again. Ah. And then he uh, died of his disease. The more you know. Yeah. Um, so you can't count Toy Story. Yeah. That was prior. That was Pixar. So give me a Disney. Erica, oh. give me. I mean, you got a little guy. Mm. Your little guy is so cute, isn't he? Huh? Mm. I was seeing him the other day. He's just cute. So what is your favorite Disney thing? When you, with your son, Cruz, did you say, hey, I want to you to see this Disney because it had memories to you? Ooh, um, good question. It's I'm seven and eight years older than my siblings. So um, some stuff is because I watch things with them. So it okay. was a little bit later for my time. But... I just confirmed. I actually really love the movie Cars, and mm-hmm. that was the year that Disney took over Pixar. So That's I think Disney. it is technically a Disney okay, that, Pixar movie. I can movie. take that. I can so take I that. like the movie Cars. I don't know if it's my favorite all time of Disney all time. Lightning McQueen. We were we were watching um, Fan. Fantasia? No. What's oh, the one Fantasia, that's old yeah. school with the music? Fantasia. Yeah. Oh, well, I've been watching yeah. that with Cruz. It's right. pretty interesting. Yeah. So, but yeah. it's, it's not my music. favorite. It was a bit spooky in its day too. It, it, yes. Yeah, it is with a bit. Mickey with the the mop uh, buckets. The pink, yes. Da, 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 yes. And the pink hippos. Yeah. Uh, yes. For me. Yes. Uh, for me, I remember Josiah was a wee fella, and uh, I always liked Jungle Book. What year did Jungle Book ah, come out? 1960 something, I think it was. Uh, Jungle Book, you know. Look it's for the, the bare necessities. Yeah. Simple Everyone is, I want to be 1967. like you. 1967. And oh then, I want to be like you. Mm. Yeah, okay, Talk all those things. Me. And uh, so what happened is I got this VHS. VHS <laughs> nice. said, to play that. And then, of course, when his son came along, Zion. Yes. What's the movie I show for him? Jungle Book. Jungle Book. Okay, so I've done it through son and I've done it oh. through uh, yep. grandson. So Jungle Book would be my favorite. All right, my, okay, Lion King. Lion King? I like the Lion King, yeah. Okay, hold the uh The circle, circle of life. Oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> circle of life. Okay, so. Yes. Uh, yeah. I, like the, uh, I like Lion King. Uh, classic. None of this, this live action crap. I'm gonna. I said. I know. I said a c word. I shouldn't say yeah, that. I was gonna say. Can we refrain from the from language? the swears? Yeah. But the, the live action is rubbish. That the remakes absolutely rubbish. They shouldn't be doing it. What are we talking about? The live action remake of the Lion King. Have you seen it? Um, I think so. They look like real lions. Right? Yeah, but it's kind of like. Well, I don't want to see a real lion fighting. I want to see. It's, it's like I want to see cartoons. There's, you can't see the emotion in the faces of a a real lion mm. versus like an animated lion. You can't see emotion. Unless, I don't know, it's like music or something. I, I don't like it. I'm not a fan of it, all right? Yeah, I've, I've, I've watched a couple of times, looked into that Disney channel, but I haven't... What, really Disney f- Plus? Is that what it's called, Disney Plus? Well, you're talking about the streaming app? Yeah. Yeah, Disney Plus. I yeah. haven't found that to be that great. It's it's good for Marvel things. Oh, Marvel, Star Wars. Yeah, but that's not Disney what I think of. Oh, but they it own, is they now. Own it now. When they I was it. a kid, when I was a kid on a little black and white TV, oh, yes, yes. Uh, not every week, but on a Saturday night, uh, well, I don't know, I was only young, they'd have the Disney club show, Disney Kings. You know, oh, they okay, say, okay. M I C K E Y M O U S C Mickey Mouse. You know what I mean? All that stuff. 
So and they used to do the cartoons in this area there. And it'd be like a special, and my mom and dad oh. and the staff would all sit down there and, and watch it. And of course, we would be the remote control, but we'd just stay over there. <laughs> so we'd watch those things there. But it's sort of gone so far away. I mean, there was movies like It's a Bug's Life and other things was great. Yeah, but, Bug's Life was all right. But I mean, it's oh, just yeah. it's gone so far away from the original area. So you know, what's Marvel Comics got to do with it? You know? Yeah, but but D Disney owns Star it. Wars. Now they own Star Wars. Yeah, yeah, they do. You know what I mean? So that's to me is not pure. So the point is that I'm making is that it's good for the new releases. What you're saying is not what you think of as Disney. No, I mean like how many times do you want to see every Marvel movie is the same? Yeah, it, it starts is. off with the humor <laughs> and they're high. Then this tragedy happens. Looks like they're gonna fail, yeah. and then they come through and they survive yeah. and on to the next thing. I mean like the script is so. Predictable, predictable, there's, simple, boring. It's like, why? Yeah, why? I've never even seen that four movie or that. <clears throat> oh, the new one. Yeah, you're not missing out. I mean, much. like, like, what is it? You know, there's. I don't think of anything in the area. Yes. I think I had more fun on Saturday afternoons or or the week mornings watching Spidey Man. You know, and the cartoons. Okay, well, areas. Marvel Spider Man movies. They're pretty good. Homecoming, No Way Home, and uh, uh. I Far from home. That was the trilogy. That, that I don't know. Right. I, I just don't right. find them that exciting. Okay, give me another news oh, story. Huh? Really oh. quick, my I this could be controversial, but uh -oh. my favorite new release on Disney forward slash Marvel was WandaVision. I quite liked that. Show. Who? Well, you actually like WandaVision? WandaVision. Dang. What's yeah, that? The concept was pretty cool. What's WandaVision? It's, it's if you don't, yeah. It's, it's, it's a it's a Marvel movie, Sean. Show TV show. TV show. Sorry, it's about who featuring uh, Scarlet Witch. Yes. Sorry, witch, that's, that's witch. sorry, that's probably the controversial nice. part. <laughs> I don't know if you know this, sister, but I'm a conservative Christian. I know that's what I said. <laughs> conser con um, controversial. Excuse me. Okay. Yes. One division. She deals with the loss of losing her love Just interest go back by to Fantasia. enslaving a town. Okay, move on. Speaking of things, thing, I I read yeah. an article or saw a thing there on Peppa Pig. Yes, oh. Peppa yes. Pig. Are oh, you no. a Peppa Pig fan? No, oh, you're they're not. such Wait. brats. Like, oh. honestly, <laughs> I hate I hate most current like kid shows. I think they're horrible. Okay. <laughs> well, Peppa Pig seemingly is now going to have a same sex couple. Yeah, it's uh, two mummy polar bears. The left has gone too far. Sure, oh, <laughs> they said they got inundated <laughs> with uh, what do you call it? Signatures. Oh, signatures. Twenty-two thousand yeah, signatures. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so they're going to bring in the same sex. Couple, two mummy polar bears. Yeah, two mummy they polar bears. It says like uh, one is a doctor and the other one makes spaghetti. And, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So one's a doctor. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I want to for a vintage Disney. I really liked the Sword in the Stone. The Sword in the Stone. Sword in the Stone. Mm. Yeah, I thought King that was a great Arthur, movie. Right? A bit vintage. I remember as a kid uh, down the Gold Coast. It was called the Sundown Cinemas. It's near where Australia Fair is. We yep. went and saw the one. It was the Robin Hood, but it was a fox playing Robin Hood. Oh, oh. yes. That was yes, like a, yes. many, many is years ago. Fantastic Mr. Fox, is that it? No. No, wait, is that something Goober? different? I don't no. know what I'm talking <laughs> about. Mr. Fox, that's George Clooney. I know it's oh. No, no, I'm talking about way back, man. So was, I think it must be the 70s. Yeah. It was about Robin Hood, but he was played by a fox. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it goes way back. The only reason I remember is because I got this ice cream there. <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> ice cream. I got this ice cream. There was a cinema that a at Southport oh called yeah, Sundown, the music up. and there was a ice cream. <laughs> and uh, I just remember it was an orangey color, like the color of the fox. And I just really liked it, like crispy on the outside, ice cream. So in the middle. you liked going to the cinema not to watch movies, but to have the ice cream. Sometimes it was like that. I it's mean, about like the experience. Yeah, <laughs> he's doing his Seinfeld thing. Yeah. Oh, wow. Do you remember those chop tops used to get? Yeah, I didn't really. I oh, mean, do you have I, them in America? I'm American, so my experience was different. It was okay. the milk duds, you know, yeah. in the Coke no, or oh, whatever. I, I, tried one, I tried one of those those ice creams you get from the cinemas. They're not. Chop top. Yeah, I, I'm not. I don't see them. Yeah, but in my day, that's all you got. That's oh, really? Like you got variety today. We didn't oh. have the variety. So, and But again, everybody would crunch that chocolate and it used to drive me nuts. <laughs> <laughs> and then they'd eat that crispy cone. Oh, oh, the 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 wafer, wafer. whatever the cone is, the chop top sits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ice we, cream cone. We used to get those particular at the drive-in movies. 
Oh, <laughs> I've only seen Drive driving movie once. Yeah, yeah. Well, they got one still at Yatlas. Yeah. One, yeah. They used to be everywhere, driving movies. Oh, really? Everywhere, driving movies. Because the, the purpose of it isn't actually to watch a movie, right? It's to... Uh... If you're a kid, it was there to watch the oh, movie. Oh, yeah, of course. But if you're okay. an adult... If you're an adult, hopefully you had kids. Otherwise, <laughs> you're in trouble. So, uh, that's how <laughs> But, uh, yeah, the cinemas and everything else. So, they were, they were a big deal then. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I can still remember, I was only a kid. I must have been 13, 14, uh, going to the city on the train to watch King Kong. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. King Kong. Yeah, mm. good movie. There's on George Street Cinemas. I think it's a Hillsong Church now. Oh, <laughs> Mm, I think it's on, it's on George. I'm I just serious. I've been looking at a Disney list this whole time. Yeah, I really loved the movie The Santa Claus as well. So I, what? That, the Santa Claus with Santa. Tim Allen, right? Oh, okay. Yeah. It's one Santa of my Claus. favorite movies of all time, actually. So oh, he hates Christmas. You in that it's your favorite movie of all time. The problem is you couldn't remember it when we asked. Well, you. I didn't even know it was Disney until I just found it. Yeah, the oh, Santa Claus true, movie, Tim Allen was 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 yeah. very good. I don't know about the other ones, part one, yeah. two, three, just the first. Uh, one. just the first yeah. one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I yeah. think the first one okay. was good. Yeah, I, I did like that movie, but I was an adult. Sorry for digressing. I'll, st- I'll we can go to a can different. Can you turn topic the Seinfeld now. off, please? Okay. <laughs> can we stop talking about George, nothing? George, can you turn it off? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but time's almost gone. Hey, oh no. Wait, wait. Okay, okay. Actually, okay. Which which characters would we be? Your Seinfeld, obviously, Sean. No, I don't want to do anything in Seinfeld. I'm no, but okay. Who am I? Okay, we're gonna. Yeah, I'm not interested. I got one more article if you really want to talk about One more article. All right. Well, in an ironic twist, a a bunch of coal miners rescued a a dead electric car. Now, let's tell you this. In Virginia, (laughs) in Virginia, okay, these people are in their flash electric car to the big drive. You know, keep it safe, you know. Save the environment. Take coal, 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 petrol. And you know what happened to them, Erica? They ran out of charge. (laughs) (laughs) The electric car stopped. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> and it just happened to be just in front of a coal mine. Yeah. <laughs> and all these coal miners come out. I yeah. got a picture, so you can't put it up. But we're like, And all these coal miners come out, and they push the car yeah. to the coal mine until they can get a pickup. They get the pickup, yeah. Mm. <laughs> I, you know what I call that? Irony. Irony. Irony, okay? It is. So the electric car speaking against coal mine is saved saved by the workers by the of the coal, coal mine <laughs> see they're good people they're good people they didn't get up there and get upset and say serves you right i wonder what the electric people would have said yeah they didn't they went up there and they pushed that electric car down they probably had the biggest laugh yeah it's like right? isn't it the biggest laugh going all the way down there but i thought that was quite funny Yes, I'm just kind of surprised they even broke down, honestly. I mean, I thought these They didn't EVs break down, they ran out of oh, charge. Ran, I'm surprised the EV wouldn't be like, hey, don't go this way, there's no charges around here. So it must be a pretty dumb EV. Well, a, a friend of mine, <laughs> or it was Rick Buskey, he had an electric Tesla car. Oh, yeah. And uh, he, not anymore. Oh. And uh, he drove up to Noosa, you know, for yep. time with his lovely wife. Yes. And then... He looked at the thing and says, I won't have enough charge to get back to Brisbane. Back oh, home. No. oh, no. So he could. He said, what do I charge it? And so there's a Sheraton up there. So he went to Sheraton. And they said, no, you're not staying here. You can't charge a car. Oh, here. my gosh. So then he had to go, I don't know, to a shopping mall. Yeah. Other people are being charged, yep. charging. So you got to wait. Yeah. And dang. you got to do at least half an hour. Yeah. Yep. Well, that's okay if you're straight there. But if you're not straight there... Mm. It's no good. Yes. So imagine you're doing a long distance trip, right? Yeah. And so I have an electric vehicle and I pull in and you're there doing your charge, right? Yeah. So I have to wait for you to finish charging, mm. right? And then when you finish, I plug in, but I know I only have so many kilometers of charge to the next place. Yeah. So you know what my goal is? Get there before you. Yeah. That's so there is this race of like, can I go to the restroom? No, you can't. Can uh, I get the next No, charger. you can't. I gotta get to that next place. I gotta get my charge <laughs> before Ed gets there. Huh? That could be pretty fun though. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't call that fun. I'd call that depressing. I mean, it wrecks look, the trip. Look, I look. One day I'll own an EV. I just don't know when. I look forward to no, it. I don't mind an EV if I just like coming from uh, home to work. Yeah. Yeah. Does that make sense? But what if you, because it's just not enough to really worry, you can just yeah. put it on the home thing. Yes. But you know, when Rick sold that vehicle, yeah. seemingly you have a quick charge. We can do it in 15, oh, 20 yeah, minutes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. if you have used that quick charge like 
15 times, mm. it's mm. killed your batteries. Yeah, it does. And yeah. then your value of your car is down mm. the thing. Yeah, so they asked yeah. Rick, how many times have you used a quick charge? Mm. So he's fortunate only a couple of times. Yeah. Otherwise, it wrecks your whole value. Yeah, that's true. Mm. I, I just, I, I still think that the best, they want to be good for our environment, yep. fine. Do hybrid. Hybrid, yes. So yes, you've got battery and combustion. So it's, okay, it's not as 100% no combustion engine, but it's still at least one third. Yeah. Because the, it works like as long as your 30Ks are under, it's on batteries. Yeah. yeah. And then when you go over, it's not. So at least you're saving. Yes. At least have a progressive stage. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they can't even work out hybrids for four-wheel drives, off-road oh, four-wheel drives. Yeah. Oh, wow. But they don't have them yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's I mean, true, true. they have them for uh, a Kluger. That's about as high as it goes. Yeah, right? yeah. But that's an all-wheel drive. Uh, so a four-wheel drive is basically – which is a low range, yep. which is uh, starting off with, I'd say, the Hilux. Yep. you got your Prado, yep. and you got your Cruiser. None of them are um, hybrid. hybrids. Oh, wow. Well, because, what happens when you go for a water crossing? <laughs> Get it? Yeah. I mean, they have snorkels, right? So yeah. you can go through with your combustion engine for, you know. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So what do you do with it? Like, uh, you know what I mean? There goes my engine. It's all over. <laughs> Well, I mean, that's why every electric vehicle has got to have that EV on it now, mm. on the number plate. Yeah, yeah. Because if you're involved in an accident, the emergency workers want to know if it's an electric vehicle because ah, of the batteries. Yeah. Otherwise, they're spraying water and everything else, and they're worried about the charge. Yeah, true. So how do you handle that? I mean, you, you go out on any given day here where yeah. we live, and majority of vehicles are utilities. Yeah, mm. yeah. Okay? And in the context, all-wheel drive. Yeah, yeah. And... There's a couple of reasons why the utilities. You know why? Because it's useful? There's no electric car tax. See, uh, there's electric car tax, I think, is vehicles 70,000 over, uh, there's electric car tax, except on utility vehicles. Oh. Uh, right. So there's no electric car tax. So people go for the utility vehicles, yep. and they'll do them all up because there's no luxury car there's tax. No luxury car right? tax. But the fact, the fact, that's why there's so many of them. But the fact is, you get a Prado, which is over it. Over seventy, or you get a cruiser, then you pay electric car tax as yeah. well as your GST. There's a double tax, uh, and and that luxury car tax. This is how hypocritical governments are, or parties. Yes, that luxury car tax was only supposed to be in to support our own Australian working car businesses. Yeah, so it was to support Holden, Ford, Toyota making cars. Yeah, yeah. Well, we haven't made cars here for years, yeah, years, and they still have the luxury, still car, luxury tax, car tax, which yeah. is meant for our home cars. Wow. Dang. Yeah, I know. I know. Oh, well, I think time is gone. Yep. It's been good talking to you, Mr. Ed. Yes, it has been good discussing. Miss Erica, market. so nice to have you with us. I didn't ask you how you are today. I apologize. Are you doing okay? All is well. Thank you. All is well. All is well. It is well with my soul. Yes. Ed, you doing okay? Yeah, I'm a bit sunburnt because we did some filming for the ladies' conference promo. I can't see any red on your arm. It's on my arm that you I can't, can't really see it. It makes the hair. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, so the ladies' conference is coming up. Yeah. When is that? Twenty uh, first and twenty second of October. That, yeah, aren't you glad that she jumped in yeah. for you? That Woo. one. <laughs> I keep forgetting what it's called. Eh? Oh, empower. empower. Oh, empower her. No, empower. It's spelled with the silent H. But it's and um, the topic is in the midst. In the midst. Yes. Yeah, failing sparks is a guest speaker. Yeah, there. a good thing. And uh, I was talking to Sai today about uh, on the fifteenth um, of October. Yes. Doing November. This. November. Wait, what? October what are we November. About? I thought it was October. I thought it was November. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yes. What? A camp. Men's camp. <gasps> he says November, is it? Men. I thought that's what you guys oh, said. Oh, 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 I, 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 I'm okay. Which, anyhow, either October or November, <laughs> more than likely Eric is right in November, we're going to do an overnight men's camp. <laughs> yeah, right? men's camp. Oh, 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 Probably oh. out on the dam so we can take our skis and everything else and do some. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I'd see dude. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, go out there. So, Jet ski. You can bring your little... My drone. Yeah, I'll bring drone. my drone. <laughs> Yeah, we fly out there. So that'll be good fun. Yeah, and uh, awesome. this Sunday is uh, I'm speaking in the morning. In the morning, yes. And Josiah speaking in the evening. In the evening. Mm, so this should be a good time. So yeah, it will be. it's going to be a good Sunday. Come and join us. Yes. And uh, we love you guys and we're all holding you in prayers. Yes. God bless you. You have a great day. Here we are.